Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. Today what we're going to do is build another design of a Tesla turbine, more like the original design that Tesla had built. I just got done showing you how to turn one of these stepper motors into a really uniquely designed Tesla turbine. So what we're going to do today is take one of these small stepper motors and we're going to turn it also into a Tesla turbine, a lot like what I did before, except for it's not going to have the gradual staircasing look inside the fins. It'll be just like the original Tesla had designed. We're going to minimize the amount of boundary layer because we're using pre-designed materials here and we're not designing these ourselves, which is very difficult to do. Uh, we're getting a limited amount of boundary layer right here. This is how much sheet material is coming all the way down. So they're not going to be quite as efficient as something that you designed on your own or built your own plates for. But this is a way to take something that's already in existence and make it into something that should work really efficiently. We may not see exactly what Tesla saw in just his design, but with these added extras that the stepper motors allow within these teeth all over on the inside, the teeth on the inner rotor piece, and all the rest of the blades, these outer jagged edges that allow us a lot of startup torque, which I'll show you later on. I've already tested one of these. So let me go ahead now and crack this case open real quick so you can see the original starting point that you're going to have and how much work it is to get it all stripped down. To get it to look like the pieces you see in the background, there's another one of these exactly the same size back here that's already been taken apart. And I'm already got half of the rotor completed with the blades installed, and I'll show you that here in a moment. For the stepper motor and it's gonna be very difficult to press all that out. So what I did is cut all the wire across the faces here. You have to chip out all the plastic here, cut all the wires on both sides. You can see the other side here has all these wires hanging out of it. So you have to cut all the copper wire off of those coils and then take a press or something about the exact same size to fit against the laminate ring in there, but inside of the case, you have to press that out really gently to try not to hurt as many of them as you can. And once you get that out, you'll have your case, you'll have this thing of laminates, what it'll look like this, let me get that off camera, yeah. up with something just like this. And it's got the fiberglass or whatever it is, little cores still left in it. I cut the edges off on either side. And now I've got a bunch of laminates. You're gonna to wanna to peel each one of these apart. The smaller stepper motor, the laminates themselves aren't glued together. They just have little tiny recessed sections on one side and a little pin right at the tip of my finger, those black dots that you see. One side's kind of recessed, the other side's kind of stuck out and they snap together. So they're pretty easy to pull apart. Uh, that's two of them right here. So you've actually got each one of those individual ring. Uh, those are pretty easy once you get that set up. So you'll have a case which will look like this right here. You'll have an outer case, you'll have a stack of laminates, and you'll have a rotor so ready to go. Rotor. But I've already got halfway complete here. I'll pull the cap off the end of it. And I've chiseled out all that epoxy out of those teeth right there. You can see how shiny it is all the way through. Once again, it originally starts looking just like that. And you're gonna chisel out all that epoxy all the way through, making sure to expose all your little teeth because those teeth are gonna be your vortex grab rotor. And each one's slightly staggered, like I said, so it's gonna follow the vortex pattern. Uh, I've got all the laminates now stacked halfway down the inner rotor, ready to go. I've got glue on one side holding it in place. And right now I'm using some string very thin string to keep the distance between each one of my laminate plates. And once I've got this whole thing stacked, I'm gonna go inside of these and I'm gonna run one little line of epoxy down my keeper pins on either side, on just one of these arms on either side. And that's gonna lock them all to the exact distance I want them without that string in there. And I'll unwrap the string once that's done. Uh, here in these little grooves, like I showed you in the original building the Tesla turbine out of the other uh, stator motor, I have to build keeper pins that'll fit. It's very difficult in the camera here, folks, to show you these grooves. But these grooves have a recess in them. So you're going to build a little pin that slides down into that recess that will line up with the inner teeth you see here on this ring. So those inner teeth will line up right perfectly with some of these lines. You'll put a little keeper pin in there on two sides and then slide those down over that keeper pin and that'll lock it so it doesn't spin against the inner rotor like this. It'll keep it from ever doing that. It's an easy way to lock them all into place. So there you go, you can now see down those holes and you can see that the blades are now perfectly lined with each other and you can see right through it more like the Tesla turbine's original design. Uh, once again, we're, we're limited because we're using already designed plates, we're limited on the amount of surface area we're gonna get boundary layer effects on. But this will still work really well because of the inner rotor teeth and all the little blades that are in there on the outside and everything. So all I'm going to do now is finish the rest of this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I've completed the entire rotor now. You can see we've got all our pieces all the way around right there. Everything's spaced. It's ready to go. We've got our output holes on the back side of the case drilled in it right there. 
We've got our output holes on the front side of this case plate right here all the way around. You can see those output holes around the center drive shaft ready to go. All right, so we've also got the case ready to go here. You can see I've made a slice all the way down the case, and that was with a grinder edge. A real thin grinder blade went down it and then angled the grinder blade to give me one side that's kind of angled with the turbine direction, and the other side's kind of a blunt edge right here. I'm always going to spin this one direction. I don't need these multi-directional. These are just test turbines to have some fun with. Uh, so we now need to build an outer case around this that's going to get the air or water flowing in a vortex direction, kind of spinning it already into that case and that'll deliver that force into our Tesla turbine. All we have to do now is basically put this all together, put on the outer case like I said and add some pressure to this. Let me go ahead and throw this all together real quick so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got that back in the case. Now you can see what it looks like when it's all together. We've got our output holes on the front and the back right there. We can spin this. Let me turn it around. You can hear a little bit of the uh, magnetically charged dust that's still in there. I haven't blown this out with an air compressor yet. Very difficult to get the dust off of those uh, laminate plates because it is a magnetic rotor inside of there, which is very unique when we talk about water because water has a diamagnetic presence, which may end up creating some very unique effects. I've already noticed by putting this in water and spinning this, the water coming out in one direction holds very tight to the case, so the, the pumping effect is very unique. Now you spin it the other way against the hard edge, that's your sloped edge, you hit it against the hard edge and it sprays straight out. So a very unique pump, and I'm going to show you that here just in a moment. We're going to set this in a little thing of water. We're going to spin it so you can see the turbine. You can also see the pump effect that it has in both directions. All right, so I have that Tesla turbine chucked up in a drill. I'm going to spin it one direction that's going to give us that vortex effect of the water coming out and wrapping around the case, which you should be able to see. So once again... So that's the direction that you see the water actually going with the case of vortex direction. That's exactly the same pattern you've got to follow for your input flow. I'm going to reverse the drill direction now. We're going to use it as a pump. I'm going to try to turn this a bit so you can see the actual water flow coming out of there. So there's the Tesla turbine working like a pump. And I'm just blowing water all over my countertop here. You can actually see the water flow all the way around right there. That's due to the vortex being created in the Tesla turbine. And slightly due, the reason it's following it also, is due to the diamagnetic presence of the water and the magnetic rotor we have inside of here. Uh, the next steps of this turbine, obviously, folks, now is like I said, i got to build the outer case. we got to set this up with the other three of them that we have, and we're going to do a bunch of tests on this. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Teslonian. Look at that vortex flow coming around the edge. Beautiful.